Hi, in this video, I will show you how to measure large resistances in order of tens of mega ohm to tens of giga ohm using simple equipment like a bench power supply and normal multimeters. In a future video, I will show you how to measure very large resistances like up to tens of tera ohm and also how to measure polarization and depolarization current using the same equipment together with a tiny additional electronic circuitry. If you have a normal multimeter, you can, for example, measure 40 mega ohm, 60 mega ohm directly by the multimeter. Or if you have a good multimeter like this one, for example, this is UT61E, you can measure up to 220 mega ohm directly with the multimeter. But if you want to measure, let's say, 10 giga ohm, then you cannot do it, do it using this. So that's where this setup can be helpful. Okay, let us look at the basic principle. So basically what we have, we are going to use voltage divider principle to do this measurement. So here we have a bench power supply, input voltage, and we have two resistors. And here we measure the output voltage. So this is a voltage divider using simple Ohm law. You can know this relation. So voltage output is equal to this one. Now assume that we know this R2. Obviously we know the input voltage and we can measure the output voltage. If you rearrange this equation, you can calculate R1 from this um, equation so we know v in we know v out and let's assume that we know also r2 because we are going to select r2 so in that case we can calculate r1 now if you put r2 very small let's say tens of kilo ohm and this r1 is very large because you want to measure very large resistances let's say 10 gig giga ohm then the output voltage that you have here will be very tiny because the voltage would divide between them and you measure very tiny values. And since your input voltage is also limited, therefore you cannot measure proper values here. If you put R2 very large, let's say 100 mega ohm, uh, so that you can have a reasonable voltage here, in that case there is also a problem because your multimeter itself has internal resistance and this internal resistance will be parallel with this resistor that you put here. And if this one is very large, your measurement will not be correct. So the trick here is that we don't put this R2, but instead we use the internal resistance of the multimeter as part of our circuitry. And this is basically within the voltage divider circuitry that we have. Okay, so now the task for us is that we have to measure the input resistance of the multimeter. Uh, and from there, we can basically use the same formula that we have here. So R1 will be this one, and here instead of this R2, we have the internal resistance of the multimeter. Now, depending on the multimeter that you have, and depending on the range of voltage that you have, this internal resistance can be different. It can be 10 mega ohm, 11 mega ohm, it can be giga ohm. So it's different. So first we have to measure that one, and then we know this one, we can basically perform uh, our measurement and calculate the resistance that we want to measure, this R1. Now obviously this output voltage that we have when we connect the circuitry like this, it's already the voltage that our multimeter measures. So normally we connect the multimeter in parallel, but in this case you notice that we connect the multimeter when it's at voltage range. We connect it in series with the test setup. So this is in series. Whatever value that we read here is V out, we put it here, V in, we know it. And this R, we also know it from some measurements that we do. Okay, so let's first measure the input resistance of my multimeter. Okay, so I have two multimeters that are identical. This one is set on the voltage range and this is on ohm meter. So I'm going to measure the input resistance of this multimeter when it's on the voltage range using the other multimeter. So you notice that it gives me something around 11 mega ohm. This multimeter has multiple ranges. So from zero volt to 2.2 .2 volt, it's one range and from 2.2 .2 volts to I think 22 volts is another range and so on. In order to measure the resistance, this one applies a voltage and then it basically calculates the current and from there it calculates the resistance. But since the voltage that this applies is very small, the multimeter is automatically on the lower range. So when we are in the lower range, actually the input resistance is 11 mega. If I change the range, Let's say now we are in this range. You notice that the input impedance become 10 mega ohm. And if I go in different range, uh, again, the input impedance is 10 mega ohm. Different range, uh, still is 10 mega ohm. 
So for this multimeter, when it's on the voltage range, basically we have two input impedance. Either it's 11 mega ohm or it's 10 mega ohm. And if I put this on millivolt, it will be a different range and it will be a different uh, input impedance. But we are not dealing with that. We are now dealing only with this part. So based on this, I know that if the voltage that I measure is below 2.2, then instead of this R, I should use 11 mega ohm. And if the voltage is above 2.2, because it will go to different range, then I have to use 10 mega. All right, so now let us do a calibration test to see whether our method works or not. All right, so here I have a resistor that is 100 mega ohm. I'm going to put this multimeter on ohm and measure this resistance. Even though I know that this is around 100 mega ohm, but it has 10% uh, error, so it, the value can be a little bit different. Okay, so the resistance that we read is around 106. 5 mega ohm or okay it changes because I'm touching it it's 106.4 mega ohm so we have this one okay so we know that the resistance is 106.4 mega ohm when we measure it directly now let us do the measurement using the method that I mentioned so we set this one on voltmeter and we are going to connect this circuitry basically bench power supply through this resistor and in series with our multimeter so this is the bench power supply it goes through the resistor and then it goes in series with the voltmeter and then at the end we have the ground connected. So basically we have created this circuit. I'm going to apply 10 volt. So when I apply 10 volt, you notice that the voltage that I read is 0 0.936 volt. But this is below 2.2. .2. So I know that for this range, the resistance of our multimeter is around 11 mega ohm. So I'm going to do this uh, calculation basically. Okay, so after doing calculation, basically using the same formula, and I said because the voltage is below 2.2, for me it will be 11 mega ohm, and I just divided it, and you can notice that we get 106.44 mega ohm, which is very similar to what the multimeter directly measured. So now that we know our method works fine, we are going to measure a value of resistance that uh, we cannot directly measure with the multimeter and that is for example a giga ohm so instead of 100 mega ohm i'm going to connect another resistor this one is one giga ohm okay so the value is this one i'm going to calculate again so for this resistor we have this range and again because this range is below 2.2 we have to use 11 mega ohm and you put it in the formula and it gives us 965.9 mega ohm so with this method, you saw that we could measure one gig ohm, even if the resistance is larger, let's say 10 gig ohm, still we will be able to measure it because this digit will move one digit further approximately. And you notice that these three numbers are not changing too much. So maybe with the accuracy of 5% or so, 10%, we can actually calculate that resistance uh, in order of 10 gig ohm. And if we increase the input voltage, obviously here we also measure larger voltage. So that will also help us to measure even higher value of resistances for example if i put 30 then i can even measure 30 giga ohm or even higher now in the next video i show you some trick with an additional tiny amplifier that we can actually measure up to tens of tera ohm which is really incredible and also how to measure polarization and depolarization current which normally you need an expensive electrometer to do such type of measurement but many people maybe they don't have electrometer and so this kind of setup can be very helpful for such measurement all right, see you next time. Bye.